beautiful rolling hills, the world's sharpest mountains, flying horses. This is what fairy tales used to look like, and it was good. But Pixar was like, no, no one wants this anymore. We know what audiences want. Moviegoers are lusting after suburbia. Although, here's what's unrealistic here. In a fancy mushroom housing development like this one, you think they would have a little more foresight and underground these wires. They don't look so great when they're exposed like this. I think they could have done a little better with this planning here. And apparently mushrooms get television because this looks like a satellite dish, or maybe it's just some parasitic fungal growth, in which case, never mind. Also, also, I wonder, I wonder, could you eat these houses because they look very, very edible? Hey, Pixar, hey, Pixar, if I ate this garage right here, would I get high? Ask for a friend, of course. I only ask important questions in these videos, and this is unquestionably important for a friend, not for me, just to be clear. You know what's amazing about this shot? These fuzzy slippers, they just look amazingly comfortable. I would wear the crap out of these slippers. They would almost fit the massive feet that I totally have. And speaking of toe, why only four? This big toe here is pretty much accounting for, uh, but two, so maybe that's what's going on there. Check out the greatest joke of the entire trailer. Centaur Gallopole. I get it. Although they barely give us enough time to even look at this paper. Or maybe I'm just spending too much time getting distracted by the feet. Morning! Morning! There goes the candidate. All right, all right, so clearly this person right here is a troll, and we know this because of Riddle and Bridge, right? Right? So here's a riddle for you, Pixar. Why is it that in this trailer, it is only the typically blue-collar jobs that are staffed with the weird stereotypes of magical creatures? Like, okay, all right, tell me, what's the joke here with Business Elf? Huh? Huh? Other than the fact that he's he's paying in cash when he could have obviously paid with a riddle. I mean, come on. His incompetence is the real joke here. So I guess this is a goblin, right? Because, you know, gem. Which means this world is entirely populated by people in stereotypical jobs. What a problematic universe. Hey, get back to work! Now I have a lot to say about this one. First of all, no one this tall should be operating machinery so much larger than their body. That's just wrong. That's just a workplace hazard. I know this is supposed to be a joke, like, oh yeah, 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 the garden gnomes do all the gardening. But I, I look at, I look at this and I see society where socioeconomic status and magical creature race is so deeply intertwined. And I find that very, very disturbing indeed. Almost as disturbing as this beard right here. Wow. That's awful. You could have created any world, Pixar, and yet you create one with problematic racial issues and inequality and these, these constant violations. I mean, seriously, this is not how you trim hedges. You shouldn't be standing on here. The hedge trimmer goes back and forth, not up and down. Come on. And then, and then let's take a look over here, shall we? What is even going on with the lawnmower? He should not be riding the lawnmower, and the lawnmower isn't even coming in contact with the grass. I mean, seriously, pull yourselves together, and I can't believe Mr. Protagonist over here. Protagonist doesn't even look at all this stuff. He's too busy on his phone. That's depressing. That's very depressing indeed. Okay, but why does this dragon bark and pant like a dog? Like, forget all my concerns about race. This right here, this right here is the biggest mystery of this entire trailer. What is he even doing? Also, this plant looks super fake. What's with that? Oh, look at that face. Definitely my favorite character so far. Although I do have a thing for dragons, even the ones that bark. <laughs> Down. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to walk her. Oh, bad breath. Okay, so I really want a close up of his earbuds right here because, like, how do they even fit in his ears? That doesn't make sense. 
Also, this house is an utter disaster. This door over here looks like it's never been cleaned and its entire lifespan is just caked with dirt. And then, and then check, check out this bottle, right? Like it's still got the barcode on it. And then, and then let's take a, a little bit of a wander over to this side here of the house where you've got these stacks of books and you've got this, I don't even know what this blue thing is, but it certainly doesn't look like it should be out there. And then, and then to top it all off, you've got this just random knife sitting here. What is going on? Anyway, in conclusion, good parenting. Again, back to your lair. Come, dear brother, our destiny, yo. This duct tape here and here and everywhere in the front of the car does not inspire confidence. No way would I drive with this man. With this car, the only thing that awaits is an accident. Wait. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. I see you've brought sustenance for our adventure. No, it's garbage for the trash can and you left the lid off. Oh, shoot. Get out of here. Shoot, get so if unicorns are basically the raccoons of this world, shouldn't they be making large rodent noises or squeaking or whatever raccoons do? I mean, I'm just trying to follow Pixar logic here. None of this actually makes sense. Why does the brother have a unicorn on his car? Imagine if I had a massive rat painted on the side of my door. That's not cool. That's not classy. That's just weird. Ugh, unicorns. 